One of the things that I wanted to do for the channel is expand a little bit beyond just doing deck profiles. And don't worry, there is a ton of deck profiles I have in the works, but one of the things I kind of wanted to do in addition to that is do some gameplay commentary. And I always love reviewing my own games because I can kind of give my thought process and um, give you some, I guess, behind the scenes kind of input on how I'm making certain decisions. But I also think it's kind of fun to come in and look at somebody else's game and do some commentary on that as well. So out on social media, I asked for people to submit games they would like me to review or let me look at or view here. And Evan Cole was kind enough to send me his YouTube channel and suggested this game in particular. So we're going to watch this video off of his channel with his permission and do some commentary on it. I'll make sure to link his channel down below also. The other thing that I want to note is this is 100% just for enter entertainment and some commentating practice for me as well. But it's, it's real easy to come by sitting in my living room and watch a video and armchair quarterback a game. It's a lot different when you're in that situation and you're making those plays and you're you're just in the game itself. So um, like I said, this is going to be kept friendly and lighthearted and I'm um, and in no way is this going to be a negative if we catch misplays or anything like that. So um, let's go ahead and just jump right into the game here. And the matchup is going to be it's going to be a dark Dragonite Dark Electro deck versus a Meginium deck. And it's going to be in the 2006 format. And, oh, I guess he, Evan has them right up top here. So, Meginium is going to operate very similar to an LBS deck. It has a lot of the same tricks, but it also is a little bit different. Um, Blastoise lets you play as many energy each turn as you want, and it does 10 damage for each one or each water energy. And then Meginium lets you only attach one extra, but it lets you heal for 10 damage instead. Now, right off the bat here, we actually have an illegal play. You cannot Rockets Pokeball for a Rocket Sneasley X. And this might seem a little weird, but Rockets Pokeball only lets you grab a Pokemon with Dark in its name. And Rocket Sneasley X does not fit that bill at all. So, um... The only reason I know this is because of a couple of the RSPK tournaments I played Dark Dragonite in, and the program would not let me do it until I read the card. And kind of ironically, there's a lot of people kind of get in certain mindsets when they're playing old formats, or they get really used to playing old formats, and um, sometimes you just, I know what this card does, and then you actually need to read it. And I was famous for that back in the day where my friends would be like, no, you need to, I, there would be something I would just completely miss on a line of text on a card or something. And um, my friends would give me a hard time about it when we were testing. Now, something else to note here, this looks to be Chuck's list from 2006. Something, a change has come very commonly, and this came from Jason, was you're actually playing the old Sandstorm Lunatone because it gives you, it's a power, which it does, it'll take damage from Cursed Stone, but the advantage is, is it lets you turn it dark if you have Soul Rock and Play, which will add 10 damage for Rocket Sneasley X, which can be absolutely huge. All right, so Meginium player gets a rough start with the Holon's cast form, but he does have the Swoop Teleporter to turn it right into a Jirachi, and he is right back to a fantastic start here. Now, the, the Dragonite player didn't get a bad start either. That Soul Rock Lunatone wasn't prized. He's going to shut down that Pidgeot. Um, Porygon 2, if the Meginium player plays it. And thanks to that illegal Rockets Pokeball, he also got that um, Rocket Sneasley X down as well. Now, if I am talking about the matchup here a little bit, in my experience, Dark Dragonite has a favorable LBS matchup, and I would assume Meginium is going to be very similar. At the start of the game here, you are really going to be wanting to use that Rocket Sneasley X to disrupt your opponent, go after big threats, get damage on the board, and um, really look to close the game out with the Desert Ruins and a late game Rockets Admin. It's an absolutely devastating combo against a deck like this that runs so many EXs. Now, on top of that, too, um, you just want to just get that consistent opening, consistent start, and really just focus on 
um, getting those energy into play and just overwhelming the opponent. Now, as an LBS player, or as a McGinnian player here, this is a lot trickier because you know there's going to be a lot of disruption coming here. So it's going to depend a lot on the tricks that he's playing, and I'm not sure all of them. It looks like he's favoring that Steelix option, which isn't a bad option to have. He knows he's going to start being, he's going to be able to start picking off those Rocket Sneasley Xs. Now you did see, I think Evan is on the left here. You did see Evan discard a Dark Electro at the start of the game. He probably, or for the Mentor here, he probably plays a 2-2 line. So he's going to be limiting himself a little bit here. And I, I think that's okay. One Dark Electro is really all you need. You don't need that double setup. It's nice, but not necessary. I'm absolutely loving the reverse hollows he's got here. Um, some of those early days, 2005, 2006, 2007, had some of the most beautiful reverse hollows you've ever seen. Perfect start. Turn two, he's gonna, um, he's just gonna start using drag off and start putting pressure on the board. Now this is gonna be hard. He's making a decision here. Is he going to go after the threat or is he gonna go after the energy acceleration? He goes after the threat here. And since the Chikorita is, the Meganium is a little bit slower, I'm okay with this. I think this is probably the right play. He doesn't want to give that Celix EX any breathing room. He's threatening a knockout on the Onyx next turn. Okay, so Meganium goes ahead. They do get the switch back to the Drachi, but it's just, this is going to be happening every turn. And you can, drag out for 10 is survivable. When you start putting that 20 and 30 damage on it, because Evan knows the Meganium deck is not putting any pressure on him. It starts to be a lot more. Now, the one thing that makes me a little nervous here is that Evan only has two cards in his hand. So we'll have to see what those cards are. One of the problems I've had playing Dragonite is there is some consistency issues with the deck. And players don't talk about it a whole lot. I don't think people that favor the deck really like to admit it. But you can get some really, really awkward hands playing Dragonite. And um, usually it's just one of those decks where you can kind of you can string your cards together well enough that you usually can play out of it all right, but you can definitely get some scary hands and have some scary turns in there where you're just flying by the skin of your teeth on it. Ironically, I think this video is a couple of years old and Evan has a newer phone than I do right now, but um, let's see how this is going. Getting a couple of wishing stars off. Did an adventure. Pitched the Rockets admin. That, it's all right. Rockets Admin is such a card you don't always want to lose. And now what is he going to commit to? He's got to make a play here. He's got the Elms Rare Candy, so he does. He'll have access to that Meganium. But if he's got an energy in hand, I would have dropped it here, even if it was a cast form or something. You gotta get that, you gotta get it down. That Onyx is just gonna get dragged right up again. And what does he have? All right, so he does start down the R energy. I'm I'm okay with this. Meganium doesn't have a whole lot going for it. Get the Drachi knocked out. I didn't see his other two cards. They must be pretty good cards, though, if he discarded a Dark Electrode. He does hit the Dark Dragonair early. This is going to get him a setup. But it also took a little bit of pressure off that Onyx. I'm also going to give Evan a lot of credit here for being um, being, being patient on that Desert Ruins. He's got no reason to throw it down yet. McGinnium doesn't have any X's in play. Try to bait that first stadium. If you're the McGinnium player, though, you're, you've are you got to play smart. Never throw that one to that first stadium. You've got to know how valuable that is. What does he have? I know he's got the Elms Candy. Okay. Friendly match looks like we're making a little change there. Totally fine. Got a Celebi. Got the Rare Candy. Got an Elms. Let's see what else he's got. Tough decision here, it looks like. He can throw down the Celebi. It's not bad. It's... it's he. 
The Dragonite player would have a hard time sniping it here. But what's he gonna get? Really? Mentor? Gosh, his hand must be bad if Mentor seems like a good play here. Alright, he's thinking through his options. No, nope. that is one dead hand. How do you... It's just, this has got to be an instant admin. No, I mean, I think it's actually okay. If I was him, I would have promoted the Pidgey. Um, do the Elms candy for the Meganium. Maybe, yeah, I... Depends on his switch and warp point count. I think the Elms... It's just the fact that Evan didn't have anything. He was basically draw passing. He had the Sneasel, he was doing some good disruption, but he didn't have anything. I think I really would have preferred to see the Meganium that turn. Promote the Pidgey. Rare Candy the Meganium. Best case scenario, he knocks out the Pidgey. You admin him to four. Worst case scenario, he gets a drag off and you have an admin with a um, Meganium in play. He gets a Steelix. This is fine. It's worth playing down just in case he gets admin, but it's going to be rough. Definitely dropping energy here. You got to get that energy down. They're going to drag it off. I mean, you got to have something here. I would play the rare candy Meganium. I mean, you got to make a decision here. Yep, yep, I like this. I mean, I'm not going to say this is great because you know you're just going to be in trouble. He's got a rocket sneezily X out, but um, I'm okay with this. Attaches 10, heals, and passes. Yeah, it's the Meganium player is just in a rough spot, but this is what Dragonite does best, is just create these awkward situations. All right, Evan throws down the Desert Ruins. Good patience on him for that. But now he's got a live hand. Ah, ugh. I don't know. That's a tough one. That's probably right, but you just saw your opponent burn his entire hand down. But I guess one Steven's advice that he's he's right back in it. Yeah, the admin's probably the right call. I'd have to look at the rest of his hand, but the admin's probably the right call. All right, Rocket's Pokeball comes down. Evolves Voltorb into Dark Dragonair. All right, Evan, I think we've got to talk about reading cards or maybe getting you a pair of glasses here or something. I'm just kidding. It, it happens. It happens. But, yeah, I think, he, I think he meant for a Dark Electrode there to grab a Dark Dragonite. I'm not sure. I think they'll, they've will they got to catch that pretty quick, though. It's going to be an awkward game if they don't. All right, he catches it. We're, we're, we're good here. Does a Dark Electrode. Grabs a Dark Energy. I favor the Special Dark. I think get those into play. Give yourself those options. Do the Dark Metal second. I also... I'm, I'm, I'm liking just damage the Meganium. Just damage the Meganium. The Dark Energy under the Rocket Sneasel is fine. I like that play. Don't bring up that Steasel, or uh, Steelix. Don't give that to him. He doesn't have outs. Even if he has the switch in cast form, you can still drag it up again, and you're just going to constantly force that on it. Yep, I like this play. Put 20 on the Meganium. Plus the Desert Runes. Yep, beautiful. Beautiful. 
He sees the Celebi, he sees the switch play. Pidgeotto, it's good, it gives you a free retreater there. I'm alright with the Mentor. I like the Mentor here. If you're playing the... Oh no, the Ambifom does not work. The Luna... Luna Lock shuts that down. You're going to have to find a Stadium. You can't take very many Desert Ruins turns. Alright, so he does have a Mentor. Discards the Pidgeot. Probably not the worst. You're not going to take a turn to steal like, either the Lunatone or Soul Rock. Usually. Excuse me, but it might be tempting here. I think he's just going to... He's probably just going to... He's probably just going to set up for the, the Steelix next turn. And I'm okay with this play. The problem is, though, is if that Desert Ruin sticks, even just this one turn, it's going to get really awkward for him. But this is kind of what I expected going in, was the, the Drag Trope player is going to be very annoying. Be putting early chip damage on the board, be setting up those knockouts, and the Meganium player was going to struggle to set up. We knew this coming in. So this isn't any sort of surprise here, but Meganium player is going to have to start coming up with a game plan. Where are these six prizes going to come from? And I think he's, he's focused on... The Dark Steelix, or the Rocket Sneasel EXs, I think he's focused on those is where the six prizes are going to come from. And that's not a bad approach here, but he's got to he's gotta make up some, make some decisions here. Now, if he had a switch or a warp point in this hand right here, along with the Celebi, I would say he's he could be back in the driver's seat here, but I don't think he has it. I don't know how much I like that Pidgey. I would probably just go double cast form here. I'm going to try to get as much value out of that Meganium as possible. I'm assuming he's playing Power Tree as a stadium. I don't hate Space Center either, especially in a more updated 2006 meta. I think Lunatone still rocks. He's a lot of play. Yep, Switch goes to the top of the deck. Dragonite player knows it's coming, but I think that's the best play Meganium can make here, especially if he doesn't have a draw option. If he had a draw, like he knew he was going to Scientist or he knew he was going to Adventure next turn, I would rather faint the, the play. All right, has the Power Tree, so that's a big... Big, big thing for him. Um, something else I think that's worth noting is a lot of the time players will read cards and they'll just kind of um, sometimes glance over things. And I think something with Desert Ruins I catch a lot of people on is they think Desert Ruins is anything. Any Pokemon EX will take damage in between, in between turns, but it's only Pokemon EX with more than 100 hit points. So that Rocket Sneasel EX, that Celebi EX, they're both going to get out from under that. Or they're both going to hide underneath that 100 damage or 100 HP limit. Solid Scott from Evan here. He's going to get another Desert Ruins in play. He's going to have a huge Stevens advice on the following turn. All around solid plays. As long as he can find that Dragonite, he's going to be setting okay. If I was him, though, I would definitely be looking to take out that Meganium. I think he, he has the R energy in hand. So let's see. He's got 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Yeah, he had the right Lunatone, it'd be 90. 120, 130, yeah. If he had the right Lunatone, he'd be a drag off away from it. I don't hate that here. Yep, go for the Rocket's Hideout. I don't think Rocket's Hideout is good in this deck. I wouldn't play it um, today. But it might come in handy for him here. It's probably not a bad 
play because I think he's also um he's gonna set up he can set up a nice desert ruins or try to lock a desert ruins in later on in the game yep had the stadium here I think that's gonna mean he's going to stick a desert ruins do not like this play at all this play I do not like this play this is one of those like it will cost you the game plays do not make this play it should have been either a lunatone or soul rock No way do you bring that Dark Dragon Air up. That's literally what he would have promoted anyways. You would have been better off leaving the Rocket Sneasel and then just hitting the one on the bench. Ugh. Do not like this play. I know what he's trying to do. But I think he would have been better off, 100% better off bringing up the Lunatone or Soul Rock. 100% better off. Probably the Dark Dragonair was just, no, it just was not a, it was just not a good play. And I think one of the things is, is he just, he slapped that pow down. It was just an instant pow. He's like, pow works, I'm going to slap it down. And I think that's one of the things this year in particular that I'm trying to work on is just not making those snap calls. I think if he would have taken 30 seconds to th um, think through it, he would not have made that play. I think he would have made a much, much, much more reasonable play there or come to that Lunatone Soul Rock conclusion. And it would have had the same, it might not have had the same outcome because he would have had to have the out to the Dragonite. Desert Ruins bumps the power tree like that. We're hitting for 30, 40, 50, 60. Desert Ruins is going to be 70. And this is where Evan can find himself in a little bit of trouble. I don't know if I like this. I almost would have done another um, drag off on the Meginium. She's got 110. Yeah, I would have dragged off on the Meginium. He would have had to find a switch war point um, to get out of it, and then a counter stadium to... Um, um, not die in between turns here. <sighs> Alright, the crowd on EX is interesting. That's going to come into play here. That along with the Rockets admin could spell some really bad news for Dragonite here. I mean, there's an argument to put that damage on the Steelix. I think it's just, it's... Man, I don't know. I don't know. So he did have the warp point. He would have been able to get out of it. Wait, why why is he warp pointing here? Did he not have the cast form? Did he whiff the cast form? Oh, this is bad. If he doesn't have the cast form, this is really bad. Why? I don't get this play. Yeah, if he had the cast form this turn, I think he wins the game. If he doesn't have the cast form this turn, which I don't think he does, it's going to be a much tougher spot for him. Okay. I don't like that play. Because it doesn't change anything. Evan's got to find a Rockets admin here. The Dragonite players has to find a Rockets admin here. He 
Yeah, they had the cast for him. I'm okay with that play. You're committing to that Steelix. You're going to accept the fact your Meganium is going to get knocked out. I'm still terrified. I'm still going to be terrified of that crowd on if I'm the Dragonite player here. I've got to start trying to um, diversify a little bit, get another threat set up. I really think I'm looking for another Rocket Sneasel here. I'm going all in on that play. Rocket Scythe there, I guess. Yeah, that's fine, too. Thin the deck out. But you don't want to give your opponent a ton of cards for um, Scientist either. But yeah, I like this. Yeah, just go all in on the... I probably would have grabbed the basics. Maybe, I don't know. I would have had to have seen his hand size. I'm liking the Rocket Sneasel here, though. You're really going to have to diversify your energy. What do you do here? You had a lot of different plays. I think you. there's an argument to drag off well, most of what he has. Okay. Good play here by the Dragonite. Go ahead, put that 10 damage on something you don't really care about. Now, I think there's also an argument just to knock out the... If he can, I think, he, uh, I think he's only got one special dark, but there's an argument to knock out the Chikorita with the Dark Electrode. as well. And he, the, the Meganium player is down quite a few um, stadiums. So I'm really going to be trying to ride this Desert Ruins. Yep. Diversify the Sneasels. <sighs> yep. Be smart with the energy here. Yep. Um, I don't think I would have left everything on the one Sneasel. I would have. I definitely would have. Um, I wouldn't have left three energy on that Sneasel. Especially with the um, Crawdon EX. The problem is, though, is if you move the energy out on... Um, the, he can bump the Dragonite, yeah, and then make it awkward from there. If you don't move the... In, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. He might have had to do that. He might have had to do that, but I think there's a real argument. There's a real argument to like Elms for a Magneton and then bump the Rocket Sneasel. Okay, so he plays a Retriever. He's still going to be able to knock out the Bench Rocket Sneasel EX, so this is okay. Yeah. Smart playing on his part, setting that up, knowing the Meganium was going to get knocked out. Yeah, one of the reasons I would have liked to seen a little, a little bit more diversification in the that energy there, but that's fine. He has the R energy, and this is big. This is big. If he's got an admin to follow this up, that might just be game. 
We'll have to see what he's doing here. I don't know if I like that Rockets um, site there. I don't think he really... Yeah, you don't get anywhere with that. And one of the things, I, like I said, I would have done is I would have um, put those special dark energies into play first. Have those have those options. Don't wait until... Don't do your dark metals first. Always do your four special darks first. All right. So what do we got? I think I would have... You got to put the soul rock back down so your opponent has to bump it if they want their Pidgeot. Alright, so down to the wire, two prizes to one here. I would not have given them, do not give them that Pidgeot quick search there if you could have avoided it. I think, yeah, I think playing the Soul Rock down would have been the right play. He's still going to have a Crawdont ability and a quick search here. The quick search probably has to... He wants to admin for that quick search. You you, you really want an admin for that quick search. And this is one of the reasons I would have loved to have seen a Porygon 2 in this deck as well. And one of the reasons that you see me split that Pidgeot and Porygon 2 line a lot is because you want to be able to Admin to a low hand size and then back up to six to get your options. I'm not sure I really see the point of the rocket scissor EX. I think that was kind of a weak play here. Um, is it just it gives your opponent that crowd on option? Okay, it goes for the scientist play. This is also okay. He's got a pseudo Udo. Okay, so he does have some options here. He's doing a lot of stuff before his quick search. I don't know if pseudo Udo copies if you need the energy for it or the same type of energy. If you don't need the same type of energy, I think I would have done an admin and then dragged off on or um Gosh, I so he does have the power tree, bumps the stadium. Let's see what he gets here. He might just be setting up a win on the following turn. Okay, so it does look like he's going that pseudo Wudo route. He's going to be relying on that. Or can he? Well, he's iffy on it. He knows he's gonna get he's gonna get dragged active. You know you're gonna get dragged active here. Yep. Okay. I like the clutch play. It's gonna give him some options. He bumped the Dragonite, also liking that. He's still got to find that 50 damage, though. Okay, our energy off the top hits for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 with the dark. He's going to have to fill his bench. Even then, I don't think that's enough. This is going to be, he's got to look for the drag off option. Yeah, I don't know why you'd hold that. You bench the rockets. You're willing to throw it on the rocket snipe there, but not the, the soul rock. That doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so he does go for the rocket sneasel. Evan's got a large hand here, but he just doesn't have much in it. I don't think I like the um I don't like the damage play. I don't think that gets you anywhere. I think you you've got to look for something here. You want to look for the yeah. You want to look for two prizes here. You can't kill the Pidgeot and something else. 
I mean, it's not great. You're in a bad spot here, but I think you're looking to drag off the Meginium. That has to be the play, I think. Or the Crawdon. If that's got two retreat, definitely. By all means, yeah, if that's got two retreat. If that's got a single retreat, though, I don't think that's going to get you anywhere because it'll just retreat back in clutch. All right, so he's looking, it looks like he's looking for a um, Dark Electrode win on the Crowdant, hitting for 80. Okay, so the Soul Rock goes back to the hand. He values the Quick Search, I can't say I blame him. I think we're through two switching cards, a switch and a warp point, I want to say. Okay. Gosh, he's just getting a lot of mileage out of that scientist. Okay. Well, whatever you do, you just cannot let them have that. Um, you cannot leave that crowd on the active spot. You have to know that you saw him bounce the dark. So you got to get that out of the active spot. Just keep retreating and clutching. You're going to win that game. You know he doesn't play switch. You know he doesn't play warp point. You've got to get it out of the active spot. Yeah, I, I, I don't blame the beginning player for taking his time here. This is a really, really, really tough call. Really tough call. But I think you've got to get that crowd under the active spot. If you don't have... um, Yeah, he, he, he registers that as well. I also think that Dragonite is through all four R energy. He would be okay even just to hit it for 40 here. Okay. Um, you know, I, I don't remember what he quick searched for. I would have to go back and look, but I, I do think there's also a logic to just bouncing the Dark Electrode here. That Lunatone and Solrock, like it's stopping your quick search, but it, it's basically two dead bench spots from the Dragonite um, perspective. Yep. I can't see the retreat. Is that one or two? I think I I want to say it's thinking it's only one, but it might be a two. I guess that's a quick search. Is he's getting the magneton or one of the cast form pieces? Yep, bouncing it totally fine here. So he has to, I think he's fine if he just hits it for 40. Um, but I think the correct play is to retreat in clutch. You're gonna be able to bounce it again on the following turn if, when he drags it active or if he drags the Meginium active, he's not gonna get the Sneasel out of the active spot. I think that is the game winning play there. I think just leaving in the active spot it leaves you to lose to a desert ruins. Long turn here, but like I said, I, I don't blame him. This is basically he's basically deciding the game right here.
Let's see what we're... Right. He's still thinking, still thinking. You gotta retreat here. You gotta retreat. Don't take that chance of losing to a Desert Ruins. Alright, here it goes. Tops the Desert Ruins. That is rough. You hate to see it, but I do think he would have won it. Yeah, I think if he would have retreated to the pit jet, he would have won there. But this is also, you know, this is also why we played these games. It's much better to make um, misplays and mistakes in friendly games like this than it would be to go into a tournament and make those mistakes. So, um, you know, and I, I'm, I did martial arts for a lot of years. Um, basically all through college and a little bit after. But one of the things was is you, you leave your ego at the door, especially when you guys are, when you go in on an afternoon and you're rolling, it's not a tournament, anything like that. You're just there to, um, you're, you're there to get better. You don't keep track. Um, you never keep track. And that's one of the unspoken rules is you never keep track of um, submissions when you're rolling because that's not the point. People are, you're there to try new things, see what works, get better, get advice. You're there with friends. That's what it's there for. You don't keep track of that sort of stuff. And it's the same thing with these, uh, these fun games. Obviously you're playing very serious. You want to win. It's very important to you to win, but at the same time too, you're here to get better. You're here to learn. You're here to make those misplays in these games. So you don't do them in tournaments, but, um, that was a really good matchup and there was a lot of really tough little spots there to, um, dissect and, make those calls in. So um, that'll go ahead and wrap up the video or the, my commentary for the video today. If you enjoyed stuff like this, let me know down in the comments if this really wasn't, if you guys would just prefer that I record my own videos and do my own thought process on it, let me know on that too. But um, I actually had a lot of fun watching a game that wasn't my own and able to kind of look at it. And um, to be honest with you, com comment on kind of what I would do without actually knowing the outcome of the game. But I'll go ahead and wrap the video up here, so I hope to see you in the next video.